This is like reading a chapter of Kingdom. Small tactical, tactical uh, warfare. You starve them. You take away their freedom. Take away their slaves. This is great. They're starving them. This is out of the Osen playbook. Wait. Did we hear that right? My boy JD Legend just made a Kingdom reference, which first of all is awesome. Second of all, we're now comparing Dragon to Osen? Hmm, let's unpack that. But first, we need some context. Monkey D. Dragon is one of the most popular characters in One Piece, known as the Supreme Commander of the Revolutionary Army, or in other words, the force directly opposing the world government. Osen is also one of the most popular in the World of Kingdom, known as arguably the most accomplished of the six great generals of one of the seven warring states in ancient China, Qin, often serving as Supreme Commander also. But before we continue, make sure to subscribe for New Kingdom videos every week. To begin with, let's start with pointing out the obvious, which is the parallels between Dragon and Osin as commanders in terms of the use of strategy and tactics. If we take Dragon's Famine strategy and Osin's Locust strategy, they line up almost perfectly. Dragon's strategy involved three objectives, to declare war by destroying the Celestial Dragon symbol, to free slaves or as many citizens as possible, and to destroy the Holy Land's food reserves. If we take a look at Osin, it's pretty much the same. He calls for a siege on Gyo, which is located at the throat of Xiao's capital, effectively acting as a serious declaration of war. He frees every citizen that would otherwise become slaves in all of southern Xiao, and he destroyed and burnt Gyo's food reserves. Therefore, it is just like my big bro JD said, both endeavoured in small tactical warfare to fulfil the grand strategy, by starving them and manipulating freedom truly straight out of the Osin playbook. So well played Dragon, or should I say Great General Dragon? I will say though, Dragon is a little bit more heroic when it comes to his methods, Osin is a crazy bastard. Moving on, this one's kind of funny, but true to be honest. Both Dragon and Osin dearly love their children. Clearly. Nah, seriously though, I don't think I've ever seen anyone else like Dragon and Osin actively ignore their son. While Dragon is constantly looking east and thinking about his son, Osin is even worse. He doesn't even want to see his son. He doesn't want anything to do with him. Like at least Dragon said Luffy being a pirate ain't too bad. Ohan is a whole general and this man Osin still does not give a damn. But there it is boys and girls, they're the same. Last but definitely not least, both Dragon and Osin harbour a towering desire to go against everyone else in the world. In Dragon's case, it is once again a little bit more heroic because he desires to overthrow a supposed corrupt government. Conversely, Osin lives for himself. He wants his own kingdom and fights for the sake of recruiting talented commanders whilst biding his time and building up his strength to probably eventually overthrow. But hey, we got that part in common, overthrowing. And also, if you really start doing some yoga stretches, we can see that Dragon pretty much made his own little kingdom. I mean, it's also him against the world. All in all, Hara and Oda gotta be scheming. They are the same character, but we love them. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Surely this is truth, right? Check out my other videos. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to stay updated on my latest videos. I appreciate you guys.